For the next part of the experiment, we're going to make a pile of plates polarizer. And I'm going to do that using, uh, again, the, the protractor on the table. But now I've got this little stand that I can just sit over it, um, which is going to hold our glass plates. So what I'm going to do next, uh, I've got one glass plate out of the bag ready. Um, so you can see there, just a very thin glass slide. Nothing special about it. Um, much like yourselves, and I'm going to sit it here. There we go. And <laughs> there's a good chance that will fall as I turn it, so I'll need to fix it as we go along. Since it's actually uh, too high um, for the laser to strike it with the table on it, we're going to take the table away. And um, I've just aligned uh, everything horizontally with the system, so it's going through the middle of the glass plate, uh, and it's reflecting back onto the laser. There's a very slight misalignment vertically, which is why it's uh, reflecting off the glass and then traveling back and striking just below the laser aperture, but that won't affect our, our results at all, um, so we're going to just ignore that for now. Uh, plus, as I add more plates in, uh, that should fix naturally because the plates will be held more firmly in the slide holder when there's more more weight uh, behind them. Okay, so let's put the Polaroid back in place and you'll see I haven't altered its orientation at all so it should still be at the vertical. And then um, let's set it to Brewster's angle. Now I'm just going to let you have the readings to calculate Brewster's angle for glass. So you can do that as well, well, for the type of glass here anyway. So we're just rotating. There's our reflected beam. You'll see it there. Kind of dimming. And there it's gone. So I'm going to take another picture. So those two images should help you um, work out the refractive, uh, sorry, yeah, the refractive index of the glass. Um, what we're also going to do, um, so first of all, if I take this away, you can see we, we get that strongly reflected beam, um, put it back in place, it's gone. Um, what I can also do, um, so here's a, another square of Polaroid. There we go, you can see that's just a reflection of my recording light, not a laser, so um, you don't need to worry about uh, damage. Ridiculous idea anyway. So what we want to look at now is the effect of the other sheet of Polaroid um, on, for example, the transmitted beam. So if I put in here, you can see the beam's pretty much gone. If I put in here, no effect. Yeah. Likewise, um, if I do this, you can see that goes, and there it goes again. Now, obviously what we've got here is, as you would expect, um, polarized light coming through. So it should disappear, because ideally the vertically polarized light is all reflecting. So all we should have left is the transmitted uh, kind of light, which is why we're getting this pretty good uh, effect here. So completely gone, pretty much. Uh, a little dimmed. So hopefully you can make that out, but it actually... Do you see that drop in intensity? Just when I move the Polaroid in and then take it away. I'll have to review that when I'm... because it's hard for me to do it and film, so I can't actually see the result, but I hope it's uh, appearing. But yeah, you can see that dims. But of course, um, the pilot plates polarizer wouldn't be very useful if we had to have a linear polarizer before it. Um, so what we want to do is take it out of the place and see what happens to our beam. So for example here, as I put in the Polaroid in different orientations, you can see there's a little effect there and really no effect there. But what we want to do next is see the effect of adding in more glass plates. So you can see I've got this stack of glass plates 
all of which I will probably drop. Um, so let's put in let's put in three plates more. Um, so we're going from one plate to four plates. And all I'm just going to do is put this back in place and check because I want to make sure that it's still at Brewster's angle. There we go. I jarred it slightly with my hand when I put the plates on, which is why I did that. So if I take this out of the way, So as you would expect, in one orientation of the Polaroid, the beam is completely removed. And in another, it fades a little, but not significantly. And the reason for that is, um, the reason for the fading, I mean, is just because this is an old piece of Polaroid. Uh, so it's, it's pretty grubby. If I look at the transmitted beam, big drop, not much of a drop. You see? So there's a big decrease in the intensity when I have the Polaroid this way. Less so when I have it this way. So that's the effect with four plates. Um, let's add a bunch more on. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, another five plates this time. Again, just quickly checking that adding the plates hasn't changed us from Brewster's angle. Now, I'm not going to explain anything this time. I'm just going to put the Polaroid in place, and um, you'll have to explain the effects in your lab manual, OK? Lab diary, sorry. Okay, so have a think about what's going on there and what it means about the alignment of the uh, Polaroid and the effect on the light. And lastly, you can see I've got just, uh, I think, another four plates. Is it? One, two, three, oh, six. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to whack these up. Again, just going to check that this is at Brewster's angle, which it is. So once again, I'm going to take the sheet of Polaroid. So think about what orientation the Polaroid would have to be to block the light there. I'm going to keep it in the same orientation. If I put my hand in the way, of course, it completely blocks the light, but that's not really an effect we care too much about. OK, so this would now be in what orientation? And you can see it's basically entirely cancelled out the beam. There's still a very faint image. So that's vertical orientation of the Polaroid. horizontal. So hopefully you'll be able to explain those effects. Finally we have this kind of pre-made pile of plates polarizer. So you can see it's just the same thing, um, only we've <laughs> uh, we've duct taped the blocks together. Um, I believe it's the same glass, so hopefully this should still be at Brewster's angle. But um, let's check. 
yeah, so that's roughly at Brewster's angle there. Um, so let's take this out of the way. And um, once again, let's just put uh, our kind of other sheet of Polaroid in place. And um, so there, that's quite pronounced there, I think. Yep. And of course, if we keep the same orientation and we go to the other side, So you can see, hopefully you could see from uh, the picture that I showed you, but we actually have uh, fewer plates in this one, so the effects are actually less pronounced.